So, uh, good morning. My name is uh, Alan. I'm from a company called uh, Etium, and here's my colleague Christoph. Christopher. <laughs> um, we work for an organization, a membership organization for entrepreneurs and managers, and we uh, promote doing business in an ethical way. And we use uh, CVCRM since uh, really in production since June 2014. But we started more than a year earlier to migrate from our legacy uh, CRM to <coughs> CVCRM. This session uh, is a bit a technical session about the API or application programmers interface, which is a large topic, uh, impossible to cover in one hour. So it will be an overview of what's possible. And if you have specific questions, uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me. We'll try to answer. We're also a member of uh, CVCRM, means we support the project financially. And I encourage you uh, to do the same to support this wonderful CVCRM project. Let's start with a um, rhetorical question uh, before we dive into uh, PHP code or JavaScript. And uh, I'd like to think about ways you can interact with your data in CVCRM. I think the most obvious way is just to use the interface. You browse to your website slash CVCRM and you get the interface. You can look up contacts, you can uh, add contacts, contributions, make modifications, etc. That's the most obvious way to interact with your data. Within this interface, there are several ways to import data. So let's say you have uh, an Excel sheet. Uh, with a list of contacts that you want to uh, input in the, in the system, you can just import it. There are several menus where you can import contacts with also activities, contributions, participants, memberships, and so on. If you want to get data out of the system, you can also use the menus and you'll find uh, when you make a selection or you have a, a report, with the actions, you always have the possibility to export the complete result of your search query or just the selected records. That's an easy way to get data out of the system, but it requires you to you know, use the mouse, etc., and click. <laughs> then there is a quite direct way to interact with your data, and it's um, not using the CVCRM interface, but going <coughs> straight to the database. There are some uh, great tools to uh, connect to your uh, database. Classical one is uh, PHP MyAdmin, but there are some uh, nice tools like SQL Yog, and also very convenient to have access to your tables. And you can extract data using SQL statements. Uh, and you can make updates, delete, and inserts. I would not recommend this way of interacting with your data, but sometimes it's very handy if you are proficient in uh, SQL. You can just write a query, select some data, inner join with other data from another table, and then you get the data you want. Last but not least, there is a the CVCRM API made specially for us programmers, uh, the application programmers interface, and that's the subject of uh, this uh, session. Now, I will not start with a theoretical uh, discussion about the API. I'll just show you a very easy way uh, to extract data using the API, and then we'll delve deeper. Okay, this is just a text editor. This is PHP code, and um, I added already three lines of code because I never remember these required statements, but you can find them on the CDCRM website. I'll show uh, the link later. And in fact, 
I just created a file called test.php. I added these three lines, and that's all you need to start playing with the API. Uh, the first line makes a connection to my Drupal website with CVCRM installed. I just load the CVCRM configuration file and another one and then instantiate or how they call they call it bootstrapping CVCRM and that's all you need to start working with the API and the CVCRM API in PHP is just a function and it's called CVCRM underscore API 3 there used to be a function called CVCRM underscore API without the tree, but it's deprecated, so don't use it. That's the correct function. So this is all you need to call the API and do something with your data. You call the function. Of course, there are some function arguments. And the first one is an entity. And by entity, it means a thing of CVCRM. A thing that can be a contact, or an address, or an email, a contribution, a membership, a participant, etc. So let's start with contact. We'll do something with contacts. Then the second argument is what you are going to do with it. So an action. And Simplest action is getting data. So it's just the word get. But there's also create, there's also uh, get single, uh, there is a get count, there's several actions. And then I could execute it like this and then, then I get all my contacts. But usually you want to get some specific contacts, for instance, <coughs> all the contacts that are based in London, or uh, <coughs> contacts older than 50, whatever. So this is a filter criterion. And I could write it directly like this, but it's easier if you store it in a variable. So I'll call this variable params. In CVCRM code, you find often this name, they call it params. It's just a convention that you can call it whatever you want. And so I'll define this variable above my call to the API function. And this uh, parameter or the filters you want to use in your call is an associative array. So an array is a collection of things. And let's say I want to select the contacts that don't want to get email. You know, if I go to CVCRN and I search for contacts. There is a flag, do not mail, do not email. So if you select this, this person don't want to get emails. And so let's make a list of these people. So it's a parameter, do not email. That must be one. This will select all the contacts with this flag, do not email. And that's all you need. Of course, this will return a result that I'll store in a variable. And let's display the contact the the, the content of this variable. So for each I'll explain later that it's a little more than just uh, your result. It's stored in values. 
and that will be a contact and let's show the display name of this contact uh, let's have a look, I hope I didn't make any mistake so let's see here, see the com there's my test.php that I can simply call by calling the execute, executable PHP and then my script test.php and here it is, a list of all the contacts with the flag do not email. So this is a very simple example, show the code again, of calling the API without the context of CVCRM. You can also use the API in extensions, but this is just in a PHP script that I call from the command line. All right. So let's have a look at the code in detail. First of all, there is an associative array with parameters and options. So in my example, I just use this one. Do not email must be one. But here you have an example of an option. It could be a sort option. It could be um, you could specify what you want to return from the call, but that's a little more complicated. So an associative array of parameters and options. And then in your API call, you have two things. You have an entity, a contact, a membership, a relationship, an event, an activity, an address, an email address, and you have actions, get, get single, create, delete, etc. This function will return a result and the result itself is also an associative array that contains, among other things, a values array and this will contain your data. There's also accounts, etc., so you know uh, how many uh, results are returned. Um, there's also an error flag if something went wrong. But basically, um, you have parameters, uh, an entity, and an action, and a result. I'll show you something else. Let's um, take a contact. For instance, um, Mr. Norris Adams. Let's say uh, you want to fill in uh, his job title via an API call. Let's return to the code. The thing you want to change is the job title and you see it's job underscore title. I'll show you later where you can find the correct spelling of these things. But you see that this corresponds with this job title. Let's make him a fundraiser like this. The entity is still contact, but now we don't want to get the contact. We want to update the contact. Now, there used to be an update action, but it's deprecated. It's now just create. But if you specify, and I'm back again with the parameters, the ID of the entity, it will not be created, it will be updated. So let's go back to CVCRM and have a look at the ID of Mr. Norris Adams. It's ID 13. 
So if we if we fill in thirteen here, here I can ignore the return value because it's just an update statement. So this is all there is to um, fill in the value of job title using an API call. So let's try that. Back to my console, PHP, and then call my script, test.php. Let's execute it. And if we update the screen, you see here fundraiser has been filled in with <coughs> job title. Just another example of interacting with CVCRM using programming code. And only a few lines of code. So I recommend if you're going to uh, start with uh, the CVCRM API, if you read the documentation, all the examples are in CVCRM extensions. But in order to start uh, making extensions, you have to install a lot of software on your computer, civics, uh, you have to configure paths uh, here, uh, administer and uh, the resource URLs, directories, you have to point to the path where you're going to install your extensions. Let's start simple, just a PHP file, a few lines of codes, and then you're started. And then later on you can uh, start writing extensions. It's just my suggestion. Questions so far? All right. So again, this is my create statement. We have parameters, entities, actions, and a result. Now, why use a CVCRM API instead of the other methods I covered uh, when I started the presentation? Well, there are two main reasons. The first one is because it's the standard way to interact programmatically with CVCRM um, without using the interface. And the second good reason is because it's uh, a part of CVCRM, it's shipped and tested with every version of CVCRM, so it will always work. There are other ways to um, interact programmatically with uh, CVCRM without using the API. And if you look at the code of CVCRM, it's open source so everyone can view code. You'll see they use other functions and <coughs> things, but it's not recommended because this can change from one version to another, while the API will uh, stay stable. So two good reasons to use the API. Now, I showed an example in uh, PHP. It's not the only supported programming language. They call that bindings in the documentation. And these five programming environments are supported. Obviously, PHP, CVCRM is written in PHP. Um, so it's supported as a standalone program, like I demonstrated or part of an extension. And I think in most common cases, you'll um, make it a part of an extension because that's the uh, logical way to extend CVCRM. You can also uh, do some great stuff using uh, JavaScript. Um, I'll show it uh, in a moment. A third way is uh, using REST which is a, a way of interacting with a system using HTTP. I'll demonstrate that too. And there are two more specialized ways of using the API. It's in a Smarty template. When something is visualized in CVCRM, it's um, with a technology called Smarty. And in, in such Smarty templates, you can also uh, call the API. It's not a clean way of using the API because it's against something we call model view controller where the model contains a logic. The view is just presentation and it's, it's stupid. And the controller combines 
or directs both. But smarting is a view, and so doing really some programming in a view, it's not recommended, but however, in certain cases, uh, you have to do it in smart. For instance, in our installation, there is something I have to do in, uh, in smart. And then there's a last uh, a tool for uh, hardcore Drupal developers called Drush. It's a command line interface to interact with Drupal. And uh, in this environment, uh, you can also play with the API. Let's uh, demonstrate the API in JavaScript. Okay, I will not type it uh, in real time because it's a little bit more code. But um, suppose you have here your CVCRM environment or contact form and um, it could be handy if you see something about your contact. So let's say you have a contact on the phone and it's, uh, it's Bill and you're typing his name. Yes sir, I will look up the information for you. You have several tabs so you can see how many contributions he has made or membership uh, records etc. But sometimes it would be handy if you see here something about this contact. Like uh, what kind of member he is. Is he a very active member or did he make some contributions or whatever. So this is something you can do um, with JavaScript because it's changing the front end. And um, I made an example. Uh, for showing something here if this person made donations. So this one didn't make any donation, but if I look up Claudio, I think it's this one. You see, now I get this message. This contact made one donation. This is something I uh, made with JavaScript and using the API. And I'll show you the code. It's slightly more complicated. Um, and here you have the API call. And as you can see, it has it's another function. It's not CVCRM underscore API tree. It's just an object called CVCRM with a method API. And there you have Again, the three uh, things we uh, already saw. It has a uh, entity, an action, and parameters. And what I do here, I look up the ID of the contact that's, that's displayed. You see, it's this field. And for this contact, I'm going to look up the contributions with this financial type ID, number one, and financial type number one is a donation. How do I know this? Because I looked it up in the database. I'll show you. This is a tool to access MySQL databases. It's called SQL Yog. And if you look in the CVCRM tables, there is a table cvcrm underscore financial type and you see a donation is number one so we're talking api here programming so it gets a little bit of investigation if you want to do certain things and then i look up how many donations this person made using the action get count and if we have we find donations I'll show here this contact made and then the result and using some uh, jQuery 
I can attach this string where I want and I chose to put it here. Okay, I understand this is a little more complicated than my three-line PHP example. Uh, just to demonstrate that you can do that you can enhance the interface using the API and JavaScript and jQuery. Questions so far? So how do you add that to that particular page? Okay. I had to create an extension for this. Right. <laughs> If you're familiar with Drupal, you know it's inside all modules, custom, and I created here my CV extensions, and there you have a simple module, I called it, and in the PHP file of the module, there is a hook where I attach my JavaScript file. Mm -hmm. And this hook is called page run. And here I check on which page am I. Am I on the contact summary page? Then I include this JavaScript file. Question marks <laughs> above your heads. <laughs> so that's a uh, um, maybe the most difficult part about the API, you have first of all learn all the actions and uh, entities, etc. And then you also have to learn, okay, now I know this stuff, but how can I use it? And that's why I started with this uh, standalone example in PHP. But if you really want to enhance the CVCRM interface, you have to learn about extensions and creating your own extensions. All right, another binding apart from PHP and JavaScript is what they call REST and um, I forgot it's an acronym for uh, representation, representational state transfer or something um, but uh, in common language it's uh, transferring data over HTTP. Uh, the difference between JavaScript and PHP on the one hand and REST on the other hand is that using REST you can communicate with CVCRM from another server or application. So for instance it's possible to um, write some Visual Basic script in Excel and do an XML HTTP request to your CVCRM server that's hosted somewhere and get data from it. It's perfectly I um, made up another example. Um, let's say you have a um, special website for a big fundraising event and on your on this web site that's completely separate from your CVCRM installation you just want to show in real time who will be the participants you cannot use uh, the CVCRM API 3 function because the data is stored on another server and so you won't be able to make a connection with required ones so the way to go is using the REST <coughs> interface, and I'll show you the code for this. In fact, as I said, it's an HTTP request, so it's a URL like HTTP dot the colon slash slash www dot whatever Google dot com etc. Now you have to point to your CVCRM website and then CVCRM extern rest.php and then you have a lot of parameters but you'll recognize three 
parameters we saw before. I'll make it bigger. It's the entity. <coughs> it's the action. And the action here is get. And parameters and options. And this is slightly different in REST call. You see here, I want the participants, because that was my entity, participants, get of event ID number one, and please return the display name of the participants. And then I have an option, sort by sort name. And if I call this in a browser, I get my results here in XML format. So you see there are 16 participants, contact ID 64, it's Andrew Cooper, here we have Tanya Cooper, Jerome Cruz, etc. And when you call the API using REST, you can specify how you get the data back. It could be XML or if you add this parameter, JSON, you will get another format of the results. like this. And this is what they call JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. And so in your programming code, could be Python, could be uh, C++, could be whatever, you can parse the result, either XML or uh, JSON, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So if I go back to my fundraising website, All I did was calling this particular rests.php page of CVCRM and with curl, which, which is a module of PHP, I made the call. The result is decoded and then in, with a for each loop, I put it in a little uh, div block using an unordered list. So we saw three different applications of using the API. You have here REST, we saw JavaScript for enhancing the user interface, and we saw PHP either in an extension or standalone. So three different applications of using the API. <coughs> yes. Can you say a few words about uh, how to authenticate um, yes. to the REST API? Okay, I omitted a lot of details, but a very important one for REST, because if you can imagine that everyone calling your website and putting some extra parameters like uh, rest.php and then uh, action is get entity you know they could get all your data from your CVCRM installation it would be quite unsafe so there's indeed a way uh, for security reasons to authenticate against CVCRM and I'll put this on a, another line there are two things you need The first one is the key of your CVCRM installation. And that's something you can find if you browse to your CVCRM installation. And you go to Sites, Default, and you find here a CVCRM settings.php file. If you have a look at it, here on line 171. I have here the CVCRM site key, which is a unique key, key for my specific CVCRM installation here on my computer. 
it will be a different one on your uh, CVCR installation. So that's the first key you need to authenticate. If it doesn't match, the call won't work. The rest call. And then there is another key. which is this one, which is called the API key. And this is a key linked to a user that must have permission to do whatever you want to do in CVCRM. So he must be authorized to view contacts, for instance, or to make modifications. And you can get or view that key uh, by uh, making some changes in the database directly, it's uh, documented on the CPCRM website, or a more convenient way is to install an extension that I'll show you. And this extension will add an extra tab called the API key. Don't know why it takes so long, I'll just try again. And when you click on this tab for this person, you can add an API key. You can generate one. So when I call CVCRM using the REST interface, I specify the key of my CVCRM installation and then the API key, this one. Then CVCRM knows, okay, this key corresponds with this, with this user and this user has certain permissions. So would that be the Drupal permissions? The CVCRM permissions. Uh, that you specify in Drupal, it's correct. Right. Yeah. So it needs to be a Drupal user? Uh, it needs to be a... S um, good question. Is it a Drupal user or a CDCRM user? The key is associated with uh, the CDCRM user, but... Hmm, I don't know, I have to... Look at it. I think CMS user. Otherwise, CMS user? Yeah, otherwise it will, you will get the error like uh, the key is not authenticated by CMS user. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah, and just for this uh, test, I, I uh, use my own user. So, uh, yeah, and, and I am CMS user here on this website. So, yes, mm -hmm. CMS user. So, what's supposed to be listening to your um, traffic flow and just copying the keys? Ah, uh, yes, it could be, yeah. So it would be safer to use uh, HTTPS. Mm. So there is, it's not that secure, I think, using REST interface. But sometimes, I, I know, Ilya, you have an application for data analysis, I guess? Yeah, it's the same, but I use HTTPS. Ah, yes, you use HTTPS, yes, it's safer. That you get the API. Yes, it's um, called the uh, API key management. And it's from CVDesk. If you activate that and you have the step with the API key, then you need to restrict the access for the usual users. You have 20 people in your CRM having rights to view my contact records. They know my API key as well. Then your API key? They will see my API key. Any, yes. any user in the organization. Yes. That's right. 
it's a problem in your organization. <laughs> <laughs> why the viewpoint of being safe? And <laughs> yes, that's why there is an alternative, and it's uh, by making a change directly in the database. So uh, it's documented on the CVCRM website. Uh, Looks like the API key is set to the CRM contact as well, so it's not, if you're using Drupal, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not in that table, it's just in the CVCRM. It's in CVCRM table, yes, but from that table there's a link with the uh, Drupal user. Yeah. Oh, this is the, uh, the extension from CV Desk, and here on this page, if you are patient, we'll see how um, and it's a manual method, you see it's a SQL statement and in the CVCRM contact table there is a field API key and you can set uh, whatever you want to it and then your uh, CVCRM users won't see it It also says the extension will only work if you have to edit all contacts permission. Yeah. Um, okay. Where can you find more information about the CVCRM API? Obviously, uh, the CVCRM wiki. Here's the link. And another very interesting way is uh, using the API Explorer. And it's uh, the last thing I want to show you. It's um, by default installed on your CVCRM website uh, and by putting API slash Explorer after your URL. So if I go back to this one. When I type API Explorer, I get um, this screen. I'll show it in uh, 4.6 too because it uh, it's quite different. It does the same. So, CVCRM. And then I add API Explorer. So this is the API Explorer in 4.6. This is the API Explorer in 4.4. And it's a way of learning how to use the um, API in a convenient way. You have the entity, you have the action, and it will display automatically the result and the code to get that result. So let's say um, get. Uh, contact, sorry, the action is get and it will immediately generate the code for using this command in PHP and JavaScript and Smarty and here's our result and as I explained it's an associative array I just showed you the values with the result but it contains other information as well Something that's by default, by design, the API will return maximum 25 records, even if there are more records that match the criteria. So it's something you have to change. It's an option you can add. And this option is called limit. Option dot limit, and now I have 202 uh, results. But by design, it's limited to 25 because uh, you can do uh, crazy things with the API. 
that could block your, your system. So, uh, in 4.6, it's um, much more convenient because this is a nice list you can choose from. Let's take uh, contribution. Here you have the list of actions. So there are quite a lot of actions. I only covered get, get count, and create, but you have also get single, get value, uh, etc. Why are some of them crossed out? They're deprecated. Right. There used to be an update action yeah. that's deprecated. So uh, let's take get. And then here you have the parameters. For instance, only the contribution of a speci specific financial type ID. And you see I don't have to type financial type ID equals one. Here we have a nice list of uh, the equivalent. And you can execute this and you get the results. But in the code, you'll see, okay, financial title ID, like this donation, you don't have to specify this new. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn about the API, go ahead, go to the API Explorer and try certain things, see what you get. What do you debug and sequential do? It's um, if you the difference between sequential and non-sequential is the the way the result will be returned. Uh, let's take an example without sequential, maybe in another window, and the bug will add extra information. So it will just include additional fields. Yes. Uh, I think it's the key, the key of the of the entity which is added when it's a contribution. Uh, contribution and then financial type ID. Equals donation. This one will be sequential. And this one non sequential. Okay. And you see here in values, here the values is directly an array with result, and here it's an associative array with a key as. Or the ID as key of the associated error. Yeah. And does debug just return additional errors? Yes. Um, I don't know if I can see here. Actually, I never use that debug option, but that's what it's for. It's important when you make an, uh, an API call to check the other fields, like is error and the count. And since API version 3, it will generate a PHP exception if there is a, a problem. So this is really a simplification. If we go back to my test, actually, you should put this on a try. And then a catch exception or e, and then do something when if the exception is called. So in in practice, then, in your experience, how, how far does the API take you before you begin to run up against it? Before? How, how far can it take you before you run up? against some of the units. Mm -hmm. How complicated can you make the request, for example, if you're, I don't know, if you're wanting to get, say, contacts, just to take a simple example, but you want to get contacts on a particular group with certain tags? With yes. 
So it's not always the most efficient way of getting your data. If you're using a SQL statement, which is perfectly possible in uh, PHP, you can uh, work with inner joins, etc., and then you send one request to the database. The database processes in an intelligent way because it has indexes, etc., and then you get what you want back. But if you need additional information, usually you're working in a loop, and in that loop you make another API call, and okay. maybe you make another API call to get extra stuff. Well, in my experience, it can take you quite far. Yes. You can do quite a lot of things. The main problem is that I think that sometimes it, it has a tendency to break apart, especially when you start using custom values um, between versions. So, but. But well, there are ways to, to go around it. So unfortunately, different ways of getting to custom values. You can either use the entity as such, like contact, or there is another call which is custom value. And sometimes there's a bit of difference between both. But it can take you really, really far. Okay. You can do a lot of different things with um, the API. And that's my last slide after this one. What will you do with the CVCRM API? Do you have things in mind? Um. I can tell. I did a lot of things. Yes. Uh, one thing, for example, is um, I've been actually driving to CVCRM for a client, but I'm more a Drupal developer mm -hmm. or part of a Drupal shop, and I kind of don't really like the way CVCRM is like displaying things in forms. So what I did is to keep everything in Drupal, but just keep the CV7 API just to make like some complex queries in the back end. So that allows me to, to keep really, to go beyond what CV7 can do in, in normal form, adding a lot more logic with behind this, and then save all that logic within CV7. Yes. That means that then you can decouple what you see on the, on the front end from what you've got in the back end, without polluting your backend, your CV server. And it's as well a, a very interesting way to make like some complex um, dashboards yes. where you want to have some actions, for example, and you want those actions to have like some impact on CV server and some impact somewhere else at the same time. Okay, so in a way it's easier to use web forms or Drupal than it is for or normal forms. Yeah, well, <laughs> it depends. It, it, <laughs> My experience is that I've got a lot more control with yeah. Drupal and a lot more uh, validation than what CV7 can do. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. Okay. But for instance, we use uh, the API a lot for uh, migrating our data from our legacy system to CVCR and, and we wrote thousands lines of PHP mm -hmm. code to make calls to the old system just using SQL and then using the API or SQL to uh, to put the data in CVCRM, that's an application. Mm -hmm. That was an easy way to uh, to learn it because you you didn't need to know about extension building, and mm -hmm. so you you could learn to use it in an easy way, mm -hmm. like as I thought. Another thing we use the uh, API form. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show it on my development environment. Uh, It's to enhance the interface uh, for our users. For instance, when they register a participant, When you register a participant, it will get data from that participant to show in the registration screen. So they don't have to switch from one to another to see what uh, price they have to give to that person. So uh, it's in Dutch. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll select an event. Um, You 
you see a lot of customization here, the, the prices for the event. But if I look up a person, I always take that one. It's a nice guy. You'll see here a message. The person you selected is a member. So, and he's member, a member via this company, Ford, Volvo. So give him the member price, unless he can come for free because whatever reasons. If I take someone else, like this person, I know she's not a member of our organization. There is a message here, this person is not a member. Of our organization. So here I use JavaScript to uh, call a page that will return this information for me. And this page will use the API because I give the ID of the select person. And the system will look using the API is this person a member or not? And will return this information. Something we will do with the API. What, what I'd like to be able to do is, um, th you, through CBCRM you can um, set up a web form to allow people to register for an event. Yes. There's not a way, as far as I know, of people adding a new event to the system. Okay. So that's, You'll be able to do that with API, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yep. So you could create a form and then that would be added as an event. Yeah, mm. perfectly possible. Another interesting application of the um, uh, API is, I'm not showing you here, system settings, the scheduled jobs. Let's say you, um, you want to do something every night, check the uh, data that was inputted, if it was correct, of all, if all the fields are filled in, or maybe remove um, person that are deleted, you know, when you delete a contact in CV Serum, it's a soft delete. Let's say you want to delete that permanently based on certain criteria. That's something um, you can do with scheduled, scheduled jobs, but when you look, just take one, at a scheduled job you see it needs an API call. And so uh, the way to, um, to do this is create an extension and this, in this extension add a folder called API and then uh, that way you can define a custom API and then call it. For instance, in our real interface, we do this. Uh, So every day we have a job that checks the status of the membership. And to do that, we created our own API call. So not the one you find in the API Explorer, but you can define uh, your own calls. And it's called API membership, check <coughs> membership status, something we create. And it's checks things in the database and based on certain errors people enter, it corrects them. Another way, another thing we do using the API is um, check the payment of contributions. check payment <coughs> status and so we check every day the data in our accounting system which is on another server and um, we check if certain contributions are paid and if they are paid we update CVCRM so our CVCRM users can see if memberships are paid. 
powerful applications of using the API. So the sky is the limit, almost. No more questions about the API? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.